Well, the world, back again. It's the Country Rap Report with another blog, another podcast. It's your boy, Pink XL. What up, y'all? It's your business, Pink. All right, man, we're going to get right into it, man. I'm drinking on a little beer in my trusty cup. And, um, hey, man, internet is on fire. It's buzzing. It's blazing. My man Hozier said, fuck that. I ain't the one. And he just hit us off. Brand new disc record. Hozier beef. Hozier has opened up a can of whoop ass. And he says he's here for all the smoke. All right? Now, I'm going to start off by saying, number one, the video sold me. I could watch the video over and over and over again because it's vintage hip-hop, a la Two Live Crew versus NWA, a la Ice Cube versus NWA, a la, hey, I'm going to find somebody who looks closer to you and abuse them in my video. That's what Hozier did. Hozier basically kidnapped just in time. And put him in the video. That's what it looks like. He actually goes <laughs> on the set of Justin Times' uh, lives, as it appears, ties him up, duct takes him, and throws him in the trunk. But guess what? Verse one, he gives all the smoke. He empties the clip on my man Justin Time for verse one. And personally, I think Hozier held his own on verse one. I'm going to let you speak on verse one before we get to verse two. Um, I didn't like the flow in verse one. Verse, the flow in there switched up. Uh, I can't remember the line. Um, what was the line again? Because I don't want to have to put my headphones on. Um, but at, at that very point, oh, I know it was red um, in the video. How about taste? Yeah, the, the gay line. Um, when, at, right at that line is when his flow switched. I liked the flow before that because it was more aggressive. Then after that, it was more riding the beat instead of being on top of the beat. And then after that, it was just, eh. I like that aggressiveness. I like that, okay, this is, I like the the hit them up style, this is. Like, I'm finna kick the door down, I'm finna be in your face, like, we ain't even gonna be no subliminal shit. This is what it is. And you finna, you finna own this ass whooping. But then it switched up, and then it got a little weird with some of the flows. Um, didn't seem like it was written, felt like it was more off the top. Um, but again, I don't know his freestyle ability, so I don't know if he did freestyle some of it or all of it or any of it. But I I felt that the first verse was definitely two to three different types of flows. Um, I think maybe he might have wrote the first part of it when he was really, really angry, and maybe he mm -hmm. added some bars because it be it seemed like he had more emotion towards the beginning than the end. So I, I agree. Yes. And the flow yes. did kind of change there, and it changed to the point where it really, really stuck out. Not what yeah. stuck out, but it definitely stuck out to if you are a if you are a true listener of the music, you will notice it. Yeah, and it, and, and as an artist, former artist, when I did that, it was because I was moving from written shit to shit that I'm trying to think of in my head. So it felt like, you know, from an artist perspective, it felt like he wrote part of it and then the rest of it he want he was just winging it freestyling. Well, I'm gonna be honest. Justin Time dropped this record a month ago. There is no need to be freestyling at this point. Unless, uh, for sure. For unless, sure. Unless, even if Hozier done this the next day, he's had a month to prepare and perfect it. So, but again, I'm not going to take away from him because the visual sold it for me. Verse two. Mm -hmm. Now, verse two. Now, something I don't like because Justin Time was like, man, hell no, fuck that. Justin Time called names in country rap back. Even in this record, we visually see who he's talking about. He makes me right. redneck rave. He talks about, you set the stage, I'm the talent. Everybody who knows anything knows that's for just in time. And if you don't know, then... Well, he did. He, he buried the just in time CD. So that was, it was definitely, uh, wasn't no slight in that. He was telling you, that this, is, this is what's happening. This is what's going on. I'm finna body his ass. All right, so I'm saying that to say this. Verse two, um, it's a bit confusing. Now, he gives us a yeah. little subliminal because he shows the um, ACAL shirt, and I'm sure ACAL is happy that y'all purchased the T-shirt just for the video. <laughs> Shameless plug. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it's authentic as hell. So someone is going to go buy that shirt. But um, <laughs> he, he's got an older guy, you know, doing calisthenics. He got the, you know, what do you call that thing? Oh, the uh, dumbbells. He got the dumbbells, and um, he's talking about, you say you make fight music, but you haven't busted grape. 
Um, we know Adam Calhoun definitely says on his last project, he made that project for you to fight to or work out to. He makes aggressive music. So I know that's a shot at Adam. But then he also makes a statement about um, I snatch you and the girl from you and the girl from the swamp. Something about a gator. Now I don't know if that was a reference to Savannah Dexter and Bravo Gator. If it was, mm -hmm. Savannah Dexter ain't even got nothing to do with it, unless I gotta go back and listen to the Swamp record to see where they dissing Hozier. So now I gotta go no, back. Well, gator was definitely dissing Hozier in the in the Swamp record, but Savannah. Well, I, I guess I guess it's a guilt by association. Yeah. And it is your boss. I mean, you're, you're on the same record with this motherfucker, this and me. So I'm finna diss both of y'all. But, you know, it wasn't even a whole slight to Savannah. It was just a, a bar for Savannah. I, don't, I can't see a dude coming at a chick. That, that would definitely be, you know, not the move for somebody of his stature. Uh, I don't know if he split verse two. He obviously split verse two between Acal and Gator. But again... Well, I don't know. It, it, my issue with the whole thing, I'm not sure if Hozier wants all of this smoke. Um, because Target on Lock Gator is a problem when he uh, uh, wants to come at you, when, when he has you in his scope. You know, and, and we have heard bars from Adam so when he was dissing at his best. Um, I don't know if he want to get both of them on a the, on the track on, on one song. And even throw in just in time, like just in time, still decent. He can hold his own. I think they can go bar for bar, hold you in just in time. But to add a cal and Gator to that, like Gator is very petty. Um, Gator will research and find shit about your great grandma and put that shit in the rhyme. You know, and won't nobody know it is about your great grandma but you. But you know, at that point, you sitting in the corner crying because he's picking on you. You know, that's the type of shit that Gator would come out. And Acal is just going to do the fight shit and I'll beat you up, et cetera, et cetera. But he'll still beat you with bars. So I don't know who won this. You know, round one started with Justin Time and Adam and Adam Calhoun, you know, and then Gator threw in his little two cents with, with the remix. And then Hozier comes with this. So is it? I think round one's even. I'm. I, it's really going to be what whoever comes with a follow-up will be where we start determining, okay, who won that, that part of the beef. Well, like I said, for me, for me, for me, the visual sold this record. Yeah, the visual was great. But I'm going to say this. To my good friend, Shotgun Shane, that is my good friend. To Hozier, to anyone else who's mentioned Gator's name, I, 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 don't, I, I don't think y'all want the 50 cent of country <laughs> rap to come out of retirement. <laughs> I'm, I'm just I saying, agree. I'm here for it. And if Gator comes out with a song, I'm... We, hey man, top, we, we own it. I'm here. But this is, this, Gator's probably in the studio right now. This video came out today. Gator's probably in the studio right now. So, only thing I think, Cook because Gator is being such a businessman, no, because he made time, he made time to get on the Country Rap Facts remake. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, y'all might be waking a sleeping giant, but guess what? I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. Because even if you're losing, fight back. And as a credible artist, you do not let nobody spit their name, spit your name, and not respond. So, Hozier, you get a thumbs up for me, and you get you get two thumbs up because the video is classic. I don't give a damn what y'all say. Unless y'all going to find people looking like Hozier and Shotgun Shane and all these other people, Hozier spent some bread on this video. And maybe he had the song but maybe he definitely wanted to kill him with a vintage hip hop disc record video. So I ain't mad. And the bars weren't whack. The only thing, the only thing he missed on was he didn't call names in verse two. And that little verse or uh, uh, flow change up in verse one. Other than that, right. I'm for the smoke. That's why we're talking about it. Well, the smoke's gonna be interesting. We just gotta see what the rebuttals are gonna be and how fast they're gonna start coming. And I hope they're gonna be videos to them i don't I, I mean if there are cover arts 
Well, I mean, I guess we could cover it. We covered the one with the, with Gator in it, and it wasn't a real video. So, but, I mean, it's all a part of the beef. But we, but that was a whole. That wasn't like us covering records. We covered the whole country rap facts. So right. We covered right, everything right. in there. So, you know, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see as as the beef continues. And country. Do rap, we know where the beef came from? I mean, I know. I think you sent me a record before that Adam made, but like how, how old is this beef? I don't know, because it appears that this ring of just in time, Bravo Gator, Hosier, Shotgun Shane, and A Cal, those five names have been in the midst of this. Some way or another. Some way or another, these five has been intertwining. Um, right. Again, I said I, I I love the fact that Hosier didn't get no help. He went into That's the true. fire. He went into the fire alone. He could have easily tagged up with Shotgun Shane, since I feel like they're always bullying Shotgun Shane and Hosier. But he said, "Fuck it." But he spent some bread on this video. Y'all can say what you want to say. The video to me sold the record, and I didn't dislike Justin Times' video, but Hosier video is better. Yeah, Hosier video is definitely better. For the record, all right, man. We'll keep it moving. Next up, we got Crip. Featuring Adam Calhoun and Jelly Roll. Now, I don't know if we consider Crip a country rap artist, but because he have two country rap legends on his video, we're going to talk about it. The name of this joint is Call It Quits. Now, I'm going to say, um, the one thing about, about Crypt is, to me, Crypt is if Leroy Biggs and Eminem had a baby. Because he looks like Leroy Biggs, and he kind of sounds like Eminem. Um, especially right. on the hook, unless it's somebody else on the hook of this record. This this record is definitely, he's definitely a fan of Eminem flow, Eminem's um, cadence. But you know what? He doesn't sound like he's biting, so I'm not mad at it. Um, Crypt is very bar heavy, man. He comes with the bars. Matter of fact, you've got to be bar heavy to get Jelly Roll and Adam Calhoun on a song with you and yeah, go first. And, hold and, yeah. and go first. For sure, for sure, for sure. I don't think he cussed either too, bro. I have to go back and look. I don't think so either. I, 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 he might be a clean rapper, that which would be even better for me. You know, again, this is my first time hearing him. Uh, never heard anything else from him. Don't even know who him who he is other than when you sent the video. But this is uh, this is a great effort. Um, I get the Leroy Biggs thing. I don't want to compare him to Eminem though. Vocally, he sounds like him, so it's it's kind of annoying. Cause, but I guess when you're the best everybody's going to compare you to that. So that's the, the bar that's being set. But he has that same vocal tone as M when he's singing, and he can sing. Uh, but I, I, whoever produced this, uh, they did an A1 job. I don't know who did it. Don't care. But for them to do the uh, what they did with Adam's voice and what they did with Jelly's voice, and then this guy, this is an A-plus effort. He spent more, probably spent more money on, well, I ain't gonna say more money because engineers are pretty cheap. They come and go. Now, I'm, I'm gonna say this real quick about Crip. A lot of people who might not know Crip as a rapper might know Crip as a reactor and a YouTuber. He has over a million subs on YouTube, but he has over 90K um, followers on Instagram. So he definitely has a very, very strong social media presence. Um, he does reaction videos just as much as he does original videos. But, I want to say okay. this about him. Um, this song, Call It Quits, is on his album that actually dropped the week that DMX dropped, and it peaked, okay. number, it peaked at number two on the hip-hop charts, and it's called Buried Alive. Think he would have been one if X hadn't passed? Um, well, put it like this. That week, the number one album was The Best of DMX. Mm -hmm. Now, this might just be a day, April 16th. On April 16th, okay, okay. number one album was The Best of DMX. Number two was Crip Buried Alive. Number three was It's Dark and Hell is Hot, DMX. Number Damn. four was Clouds, NF. And number five was Flesh of My Flesh, Blood of My Blood, DMX. So, Bro, you got ahead of NF? Mm-hmm. Wow. Yep. He peaked at number two on the hip-hop that's, that's, that's not some... Uh... Little accomplishment. Hopefully, screen save that shit, frame it, you know, put it up all over your wall because those those are some heavy hitters. 
And not to mention, he that was on the hip hop chart. He peaked at number seven on the all on chart the, on all genre charts. Yes, that's what's up. That's what's up. And he has over two hundred thousand monthly listeners on Spotify as of April. So he's definitely doing his thing. It's going to be a force to be reckoned with. And the fact that he went and snatched two of country rap's hottest and held his own, he might have outbarred them. I got to go back and just re-listen. He might have outbarred them. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say that just yet, but put it like this. It's don't, do so it. Close. don't do it. Don't do it, fam. Don't do it. Don't, don't do it. You can't outbar the legends. You can be even, but you can't outbar them too. Them, them, they ain't gonna allow that to happen, uh, and right. they did not on this. They did not allow this on on this song. Jelly did damn good. I and I guess I, I'm a Jelly fiend because I be wanting to hear Jelly so much, but he be so sporadic with the music. Um, I just and then me hearing Adam on it, it was a, an even bigger bonus. So yeah, I'm I'm I was a fan of the video, fan of the vocals, definitely a huge fan of the production. You know, I'm real heavy on that shit. And this is a good effort. And this dude has a window. If he's an influencer and he's got a million subs, like keep farting out music, fam. Like you already got the shit that these motherfuckers want to pay for. You got the influence. Keep putting that. I will drop a single a month. Fuck it. And it ain't got to be good shit. But if it is good shit, then that's that's even better because now you got something to stand on. But it, as long as you got that built-in fan base, throw that shit out. I wonder does it use... um. I wonder, does he use things to barter features? Like you get put on my channel or hey, something like that? Hey, he got the leverage. Damn sure got the leverage. This is, this is a, uh, we could probably look up the monetary value of this channel. I'll do that after we get done. Uh, but it, he's, he has what every other musician wants, which is influence. They pay for this. Next up, and we keep this part of train rolling, is KMM, the Kentucky Music Mafia. Let me hear you say that really, really fast. Featuring Jesse Keith Whitley with their joint Outlaw. Okay, so we have been teeter-tottering around KMM for a while now, trying to yeah. find the right song to review. Okay, so we finally came across this one, and this one is hot off the press. I'm going to start off by saying that I like videos they try to uh, tell a story at the beginning or the end or even in the middle. At the beginning of this video, it's a scene in a garage and um, basically one of the members of the group, actually Jesse, is working on a vehicle. He gets a phone call and make a long story short, he gets fired. Well, that takes about a minute and a half. Felt like five. No, they Felt didn't like make five. a long story short. They did not make the long story short. Yeah. It was okay. long as fuck. Okay, now, after that, they start the song off with the hook. I'm a motherfucking outlaw. I'm a motherfucking outlaw. I'm a motherfucking outlaw. I'm a motherfucking outlaw. I'm a That's motherfucking what it's for. Outlaw. I'm a motherfucking <laughs> outlaw. Hey, man, listen. How, if how many motherfuckers? How many motherfuckers are we? About 8, 10, 12? Come on, fam. I think he did a motherfucker for each member of the group. <laughs> <laughs> now, all of you motherfuckers <laughs> now, now so for me I don't even dislike that it just took too long that shit was right. like that shit was like foreplay like man I'm trying to get this ass man what are you doing <laughs> God, God. get to this shit Look, get to this shit so now you know what I like so once the rhymes come on the guy who got the first verse, bro, I, first of all, I haven't heard his flow where maybe he's a singer, but he's got that twine at the end of each bar. Man, I'm rocking with his flow. I'm rocking with okay. that flow. But again, okay. after that, the flow, all right. Sends up on the band, man. Sends up on the bone with the band in. From the sound right. Boom, with the bound in. I was with that. All Guess right. What? Then they hit me with the. I'm a motherfucking outlaw. I'm a motherfucking <laughs> outlaw. Hey, listen, fellas. We know bro, they, 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 they took some time on that hook, bro. That, was, that probably took all day to write that shit. That's fine. <laughs> listen, I would have been mad at it if they had it like, I'm a motherfucking outlaw riding down the streets in my hot, hot car. <laughs> hey, you can put some bars in that hook, man. Y'all don't have to make it so simple. 
But guess what? They picked it back up because the dude with the second verse. Right. I like his delivery. He got that grumpy about the voice. He got that, ver- that voice that I like. He okay. picked it back up. But guess what they did after that? <laughs> I'm a motherfucking now long. I'm a motherfucking now long. Oh, my yeah, I'm a motherfucking now long. Okay, here's my thing before we get we count too many more motherfuckers. Um hey, the dude the, second, hey, the <laughs> damn right, get it straight. I'm a motherfucking outlaw. I just said <laughs> All right, the dude and the we, we like you say, we've been teeter tottering on country Kentucky music mafia. Like the other video that we were gonna review, it was more country than country rap. But when we looked at that one and now me looking at this one, the dude in the second verse, he's very animated. Like he, he, and it's not just with the, with the body, but it's also with his facial expressions and how he holds his mouth when he's rapping, like all of that stuff. And I, I'm sure he's probably even more animated when they're live in concert. Okay, that's fine. <clears throat> My biggest issue with this whole song, it is not talent. It is the production. Um, and I and I, I I'm gonna give a name. I'm gonna name drop. Um, y'all need to look up, and hopefully somebody with Kentucky Music Mafia is watching this, or somebody in their camp. Go and look up Bob Sandiford. Bob Sandiford is a an award winning, Grammy award winning, platinum, gold, diamond selling, award winning mixologist. He's a mixing and mastering engineer. He lives right here in Macon. He has his own website, BobSandiford.com. But he does. A, 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 a review show on Facebook. Uh, it's called Picture Ditch, him and his wife. Look him up, find him, and become personal friends with him because had he touched this record, I actually might have liked it a little better because your vocals are off, the tuning is off. Um, I Some of the volumes in certain pieces is off and it wasn't balanced. Like I'm, I can go down a whole list because I, I, I used to produce myself. So all of this stuff is like still in me. And I try to fight it, but as I hear songs and I, I that's an easy fix. That's a plug-in. Cut the shit on. That's an easy fix. You know, did no producer hear this shit and how the EQ was off on this and this was too high? Like this, all of this is relative to this song that I'm listening to. This could have been fixed. So, and I know they just dropped an album. So there was all over, over the Facebook with an album push. Hopefully the album has better mixing and mastering than this song. If not, if we have to review that album, it probably won't get a good grade from me because I'm real heavy on the production side. And if I hear any flaws, I will bring them to the table, not to pick on you, but so that you can fix it so that these mistakes do not happen in the future. That's all I got to say. Guess how they oh, I'm a motherfucker. I'm a motherfucking outlaw, bro. I'm a motherfucking outlaw. Guess how they ended the record? Uh, how do they end the record? Man, the fans, 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 fans. I'm a motherfucking outlaw. <laughs> <laughs> Do we not know that he's a motherfucking outlaw right now? Let me say this, gentlemen. When you shoot, a we need to get a shirt. We need to get a t-shirt and say, "I'm a motherfucking outlaw." Times twenty. When you shoot a video, <laughs> please at the very, very end, if you use your personal vehicle, uh, black out that tag because oh, y'all. No, no, didn't do that. They didn't do that, bro. Yes, sir. Oh, I see it. I see it. Yeah, fam. There's reasons, there's legal reasons you don't want to do some shit like that. Now somebody can look you up or whoever this tag is registered to and come and be a professional stalker. You don't want that. Or, you don't want that. Or if you are an outlaw now, you just gave the police reason to do whatever. They can pull yeah. you over. Well, they can, they yeah. can run you. I don't know. I'm just saying. Well, that, as long as they didn't do anything illegal in this video, like then they would have came at their ass. But you know, this is yeah, you're right. Like you don't want to give the police reason, so now you're on a radar. Like this, that dude that makes the outlaw music. You know, this is what they do, with, especially black rappers and hip hop. So you know, I don't want y'all to be labeled as outlaws, and now you're being targeted. So just just fix that shit. That's a real easy fix. <clears throat> now, um, as a whole, I, the video didn't bother me. It didn't. It didn't really do anything for me. Actually, to me, if this video had had a, a Texas setting on some horses and some old Western type shit, I probably would appreciate it a little better because it would have made me get that nostalgic outlaw feeling. No, I couldn't get past the motherfuckers. I'm sorry. Yeah. It was just too many motherfuckers for me. 
Way too many. Okay, so KML. But you know what? But you know what? I I bet this song live with a crowd. I bet the shit gets crunk. I bet they the whole crowd. Just I mean, it ain't a lot of the words you got to remember in the first place because you're just a motherfucking outlaw. But I bet this song gets the whole club crunk. In that area, I can guarantee it. Yeah, for sure. For I sure. can guarantee. It. And again, this is no hate, man, because I actually like what they do. Um, it's just it took the video too long to come on, and then that hook made it even longer. Right. Right. You know I mean that little that little br that little interlude in the front and the hook was damn near like a whole song. It felt that way. All right, man. Next up, a group that um, this is my first time actually hearing their music. I've seen their name, but I never checked out their music. It's a group by the name of Cypress Spring, and the name of this record is How I Roll. You want to start off with Cypress Spring? Yeah. I um. I thought this video was refreshing. It was almost, it wasn't a, your, your typical country rap video. This was definitely done in a studio setting. Um, similar to studio space, you know, where they just rent out a white room and they bring in props, that type of shit. This was done in that setting. So I, I'm, I was used to this because hip hop is full of this. Um, the dancing was a little off for me in certain parts. Um, but dancing aside, setting aside, I love the song. The song is dope as fuck. The song is a good party record. And ho I don't know, again, this is my first time hearing these guys too. So maybe they make party records and this is their, their lane. I'm here for that. Because when you look at the dude, you know, one, the redhead and the, the other guy, like neither one of them look like rappers. Like you would think that they just, you know, both of them work at Best Buy's and shit like that. You know, just stereotypical dudes that you see on the street might go out to a bar, get drunk, play some pool, and that's it. But these motherfuckers got some lyrics. You know, they, this ain't just your your basic party shit. They spitting some stuff. So I am I respect them. I respect the craft. I, I think they probably respect the craft, too. They're probably hip-hop students. Um, I, I'm loving it. I, I love everything about this. Um, actually, they're average Joe artists. Okay, okay, so that makes sense. That makes sense. All right, all right. They are average Joe artists, and um, yeah, man, they definitely they definitely got bars. They're definitely students of the game. And a lot of times I keep saying students of the game because, like, they, a lot of artists, you perfecting these rhymes by studying other artists and listening. Like, you can't listen to country music all your life and become a dope MC. Agreed. It, it won't happen. So right. regardless of the of the um, American Eagle shirts and the cowboy boots. Mm -hmm. They're definitely students of the game. But this is the thing for me, um, being Average Joe artist, and I'm not mad at Average Joe. Matter of fact, I really like Average Joe. I just feel like somehow, some way, Average Joe, like we're reviewing artists that we don't even know that are Average Joe artists until I go to their IG pages. So Average Joe yeah. is not properly branding Average Joe as a whole. It's almost like the artists are bigger than the label. Average Joe needs a advertising and marketing director. They need an uh, an A and R, uh, and probably two other positions. From what I from since we've been doing this, those are the faults that I've seen. That where somebody was in that position that knew what they did, what they're supposed to do in traditional music. It ain't got nothing to do with it, what the genre is. If they did those roles, then we wouldn't be having these issues that we keep talking about with Average Joe. They might even need a tour director. Um, definitely somebody on the branding side. Uh, it's, it's just this, and I hate to be that way about them, but it's, it just seems so random as fuck. And, but you guys are the upper echelon for country rap music label. Like, why is this shit not being done right? Not so much right. Why is it not being done better? You know, because right is, you know, subjective based on your perspective and your industry experience. And I, clearly nobody over there has that um, because we're not getting the rollout that you would get in traditional music. Again, that might be just be how they, how they want to operate. They might, they might be okay with randomness. Now, this is the thing, though. They can be okay with randomness, but it's about being a powerhouse and being effective. 
when I go back and check most of the artists that are on Average Joe Records, do you know mm -hmm. most of the artists have more followers on Instagram than the label? That's a branding issue. Cypress Spring has 14,000 followers on IG. Average Joe Entertainment has 6,000. That's how branding and social now, media marketing. Now, someone over there needs to study Old No Limit, Old Death Row, because... Rap a lot. Yeah. Artists will get... I can name artists who shit I bought just because they was on Rap a lot. Never heard a song exactly. by them. Exactly. Exactly. I mean... You, you so, remember uh, you, when you said No Limit, it, No Limit was... You didn't know motherfuckers was coming out, but you still bought the album the following week. Just because you, it was a No Limit record. And you knew it was a record because, you know, they not only stamped it, but the artwork was all traditionally the same. But it was, they could be that. They could. They should be that. Not a, not a could. They should be that. Because they've been doing it for too fucking long to not have their shit together the way that they should. And we're not picking on Average Joe. We just want Average Joe. I, to me, if Average Joe was more powerful, I think country rap would be even bigger as it is now. It would be bigger. It would be imagine what what Ryan is doing, what Adam is doing. So you got Ryan, you got Adam, and then Average Joe as a whole, because they have a roster, bro. Shelby K, Sarah Ross, Cypress Spring. We've uh, rest in peace, Tommy Chain. Like we've never reviewed anyone on Average Joe and gave them any type of negative feedback. So they have a roster of talent. So you say A and R. I don't even think they need an A and R. I think who's A and R is doing a goddamn good bro. DJ mm, Canyon, no, you still they they still gotta develop the shit now. DJ Canyon Banyan just dropped a mixtape. Mm. I'm saying, like that's still random. All this right. shit is random. Because we're not even seeing a real rollout. Like but but at uh, and, and I'm gonna pull back. Let me pull back. If and maybe somebody from Average Show can come on and we can just interview them or we can talk business you know, what their rationale on why they do things the way that they are doing, and then we can get a better perspective. Until then, we're just putting in our inputs on how we've seen it run in traditional hip hop and music uh, and comparing it to what they're doing. With them being the biggest and largest label, um, what they're doing is they're opening it up by not having the structure, they're opening it up for other labels to supersede them and take over as being the shit or being the premier label. Um, yeah, they may have the biggest roster, but all it takes is somebody to come along and do it better. They got, they, they're doing it big, but if somebody comes along and does it better, then they are going to be the upper echelon and not average Joe is just going to be the, another label that is out there. They don't want to do that. They, they need to capitalize on this, especially with all the new eyes on country rap. Like they could be, like you said, no limit. Or, or or rap a lot or bad boy. Like it be all of that, and then and eventually you just get secretly funded by one of the other big three, and then you can take this shit to a completely different level. You know, I'm just looking up things now. Um, in all honesty, okay, because I was trying to see if Average Joe actually had a uh, playlist on Spotify. Mm -hmm. With all of their artists. Yeah. Like why not? Like why why don't Average Joe have they they have a playlist on Spotify that was done by Code Four, but why don't they have a playlist on Spotify? Why don't they have a a um? No, hold on, now, don't, don't, let, let's not let's not give all of the ideas. Okay, let's not do that. They can call either one of us. We can come on for an interview and we can do a powwow secretly. But I wouldn't give them all of the shit. Maybe they can put us. Maybe they can fund the show. Nah. Uh, no. <laughs> then we got to be in pocket. Now I want. I definitely don't want that. I want to control our own narrative. I don't want it to be controlled. Nah, nah. But they can sponsor or something. They can do something. Hey, we while they're they on tour, some average Joe T-shirts or a banner in the back. Something. Yeah, true. True. They can cover up them shoes with a banner. I'm all right with that. Or maybe they can get Support. you some. They can get you some average Joe Chucks. Yeah, you can get custom Chucks. Yeah. I'm not mad at that. I'm not mad at none of that. So, all right, man. Enough of average joke. Um, I gotta say this because I don't think we spoke on it, and um, this is something that definitely rocked the 
Um, definitely the Tennessee portion of country rap and those who know and beloved him. Uh, there is a underground independent rapper who goes by the name of Worm. Uh, a few weeks ago. Worm. Back, yes. It, Worm, had, um, he's done a lot of work with Haystack, a lot of work with Jelly Roll. He's definitely Lil White. He's definitely known in the underground circuit. Uh, he was released. He had, he had he had done prison time. He was released from prison. Maybe maybe he had been out a month at the most too. Um, he met a sudden demise about three weeks ago, and I just want to you know say rest in peace to Worm. He's uh, man he was really really close to my man Chad Ames over at Chad Ames TV on YouTube, and um, he's got a brand new single out right now that he was prepping to drop. That he was prepping to drop. And the week of the release of his single, which features Jelly Roll and Haystack, he suddenly passed. So rest in peace, my man, Worm. If y'all get a chance, man, download the single. It's called Gangsta Shit. It's Worm, Jelly Roll, and I think Haystack. Okay. Worm, Jelly Roll, and Haystack. Yep. But Worm, I mean, we should do a review. We should do an honorary review. I haven't heard the song, so shoot it to me. We can check it out. But yeah, man, you know, it it, it kind of really just rocked the world, you know, just him suddenly passing that way. Was it COVID? Um, you know what? I haven't seen anyone talk about what it was. Okay. I haven't seen anyone talk about what it was, so I don't want to improperly speak and say what it was. All I know is, um, man, he was definitely loved by a lot of people in the country rap community especially those who are um, in that Tennessee area. But yeah, it's called, called Gangsta Shit, Worm, Jelly Roll, Haystack. So rest in peace to my man, Worm, man. I was happy. Uh, so, all right, man, we're going to get up out of here. But before we do, recap, start the entire show off. Hold your beef. To me, Hosier definitely, definitely came through with a dope visual that was actually better than the song. Not saying the song was whack, but I could watch the visual way more times than I could listen to the song. It was funny, had humor, you know, and hey, man, even if you're getting beat up, fight back. Next up, we had Crip featuring Jelly Roll and a cow, Adam Calhoun. My man Crip, social media sensation, Crip basically introduced his million and millions of followers to Jelly Roll and A-Cal, because I'm sure a lot of his people don't know who they are, but Crip definitely came through, held his own with two legends, dope record, dope video, um, got a brand new album out, and I look forward to hearing and seeing more from my man Crip. I didn't, I didn't even think about it from that angle, what you just said. Like He just introduced his million people to two legends of country rap. Yes, sir. Like That's fucking awesome. Like the, all of the eyes, uh, this, uh, mm -hmm. we got a lot of eyes on this fan. Next up, KMM Country, Kentucky Music. Kentucky. Kentucky Music Mafia. They yeah. are some motherfucking outlaws. And if you didn't know, <laughs> all you got to do is check out the video. They will let you know. If you watch yeah. that video and you don't realize they're some motherfucking outlaws by the end of the video, then you can just run their tag number and find out for your damn self. <laughs> right, but the right. Kentucky Music Mafia dropped their new video, Outlaw. Um, <laughs> hey, man, I need to get y'all names individually. The guy with the first verse I like, the guy with the second verse I like. Um, I actually like the song. I just think the hook could have been a little more creative. The video didn't bother me, but that hook just annoyed the fuck out of me, to say the least. Yeah. Yes, sir. So if it, it, it annoyed the motherfuck out of me. <laughs> All 20 times. <laughs> and last up, man, Average Joe's Cypress Springs with How I Roll. Man, very, very fun record. And it's funny, different in the lane of fun that we talked about with another artist like Austin Tolliver. It's a different type yeah. of This was like lyrical yeah. fun because these guys are lyrical. And you know what? Yeah. You mentioned the dancing in the video. I like the dance. They got some guys who've done this. The ticking and I, I wasn't crazy about the ticking and shit. Some parts of it was like, man, that ain't how you do that, fam. But they tried. I mean, it, hey, it was a party song, so it, it really didn't matter. It's just about having fun. And when you're drunk or high, no one gives a fuck if you can dance or not, as long as you move. So, but I thought it was a pretty cool video. It seemed like it just had that one shot, but I wasn't mad at it. 
um, you know, the fam crew, whoever put it together, done a good job. Good job. Well, mostly good job. I hated them showing the roof in certain spots. Like some of those angles, you could they were shooting up when you saw the roof and it was not part of the white board, but that's just some technical shit. Hey, it worked, though. Now, this video made me want to hear more from Cypress Spring, so I'll definitely, definitely be doing my due diligence to check out more music by them and drop more music and do more reviews on them because I think both those guys got lyrics. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, man, before we get up out of here, I want to remind you guys of a few things. Check out the all-new WCRR. All right? WCRR. WCRR Radio, home <laughs> of country rap. All right? Make sure you visit live365.com. Go to the search engine. Type in WCRR. Just send them to the website. Just, just send them to the website. You know what? Just send them to the website. Tell them the I'm website. I'm working on it now. All right. Yeah, the, the website. Yeah, I'm working on it right now. You can drop it. All right. www.countryrapreport.com. Go to the website, and you yeah. can listen to country rap music 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. If you're an artist out there and you want to be added to the playlist, to the um, to the radio rotation. station, so you want to be added to the rotation, all you got to do is email us at countryrapreport at gmail. All right? Check us out on Instagram, WCRR Radio. Also, if you got a video and you want us to review it, it's very, very easy. Go sign up, hit the like button, subscribe, whatever the hell you call it, on our fan page on Facebook, Country Rap Report. Now, if you want to watch a bunch of dope country rap videos, or if you want to go watch any of the videos we review, past or present or future, go to YouTube. Type in country rap tunes. Over 100 videos right there. Right there. It's right there in your goddamn place. Or if you want to hear even more country rap music, visit us on Spotify. Country rap tunes. And we right there, man. Right there. Yeah, all of this, all of this is gonna be on the website. That's a lot of drops. Yeah. We need to start yeah. getting we need to start getting drops from artists. Yes. Matter of fact, if you're an artist, I'm putting this out there. If you're an artist, um, you know, hey man, do they I always, know what drops are? Do they know what drops are? All you gotta do is uh, look. I'm gonna make you a might post. Have to educate. Yeah, yes, yeah. But you know what? I have some drops that was for the other radio station that I'm not mm -hmm. even gonna put on there. Buy some country rap artists. I'm just gonna get them to resubmit. So you know, but hey man, I'm so excited about the direction we're going in for the genre. Me too. Very, very excited. So, all right, man, I'm gonna get the hell up out of here. My 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 cup is empty. I have no more beer. It's all gone. You drinking while podcasting? I think that's a, a spine or something. I don't think you can do that fast. Hey man, hey man, 